So I'm going to talk a bit about the autopilot today. We're in New Zealand again at Milford Sound. It's a beautiful morning and we're going to take a short trip up the coast to Martins Bay. I'm going to be making reference to three different things, the autopilot, the flight director and the altitude alerter. And I'll try to explain these as I go along, but they all work together as parts of the autopilot system. So the autopilot in this aircraft is a Collins AP106 and the flight director is the subsystem of this. The flight director is the brains of the autopilot if you like. It monitors the aircraft's position and orientation and when we put a command into the autopilot, say to follow a particular heading or some such, the flight director decides what needs to be done to act on that command. It's probably worth saying a bit about the basic autopilot functions at this point. So these are divided into vertical and lateral modes. A vertical mode would be altitude hold for example and a lateral mode might be heading hold and you also have more complex lateral modes such as nav hold which can fly to a VOR and even more complex modes such as the approach mode which I think combines a lateral and a vertical mode because it can fly down a, an ILS so tracking a localizer and a glide slope at the same time. So that's the basic autopilot, but to start with we're going to leave the autopilot master switch off, but we can still select the various functions on the panel and the flight director stays active behind the scenes. In this aircraft we also have a flight director head fitted, which essentially gives us a more sophisticated version of the attitude indicator and the HSI, and that displays extra information from the flight director. And this thing's called the FD112V, and this is just the indicator the flight director. The flight director itself is built into the AP106 in this aircraft. And so the flight director displays these two yellow bars on the ADI, one vertical and one horizontal, and these give us cues about how to fly the aircraft. So the flight director is inactive at the moment, so you can see with this red flag. I'm going to select heading mode on the autopilot. We get an indicator here. You notice the indicator, the red flag, went away from the, the ADI. You might have also noticed the vertical bar moved briefly out and then in. Uh, it's centered at the moment. The reason for that is that when you select heading mode, the autopilot initializes the heading bug to whatever heading the aircraft is currently on. I'm going to change that to be roughly the direction of Martins Bay, 349 degree or 350 will do. So if you watch the heading bug, uh, 350 here and then of course the bars moved out to the right so that's telling us something about how we need to fly the aircraft to attain that heading. It's not going to do it for us automatically but it's, going to, it's telling us something about what we can do flying the aircraft manually. Now keeping in mind this is an attitude indicator instrument these bars, these flight director bars are going to tell us something about what we need to do for the attitude of the aircraft. You might be tempted to regard that vertical bar as a CDI, like on the VOR instrument, a course deviation indicator, but it's not. It's telling us um, how far we need to bank the aircraft. We'll see that a little bit later when we've taken off, but for now, let's get out of here. We need auto feather on, arm on, and we've set the rudder trim, we've got the flaps down, that's what we need, so let's go. Flying it manually through the takeoff, we're going to try a maximum performance takeoff and climb out. So we're looking for 89 knots, more or less. We're going to trim that manually. We'll start to trim now, but I'll get the flaps in right now. 400 feet AGL easily. We're going to turn it as close direct towards Martins Bay as we can, given those mountains over here. We're going to come back a little bit on the power, we don't want to cook the engines. So I'm trying to trim for about 89 knots, trimming manually using the trim wheel. That's more or less going to do. That's the altitude alerter, we'll talk more about that later. So for now, just looking at the heading bug, oops, I'm going to pull that, we're still significantly about 30 degrees off course, 
and so the ADI is showing that bar out to the right. To centre that bar, I need to start a turn, or in fact bank the aircraft to the right, and you'll see I can centre that bar. Now I'm not going to continue in that bank because of the mountain in the way. We'll see more about that in a minute. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn as, as far as I can away from the course that I've got the heading bug set to. And I'm going to just, uh, I need to worry about the climb now. I need to, I'll, look, I'll let it keep climbing, but I'll, I'll trim it forwards a little bit as well so we get a better view. We can have the landing lights off, we can have the taxi lights off, We've got strobe on, anti collision on, that's all we need. We're still climbing, we're not climbing at maximum rate now, we're climbing at about 100 knots and we've still got uh, just under 2,000 feet per minute on the climb. I forgot to take off the rudder trip, that's why I keep drifting over to the right. So um, That's why the checklist is helpful. We can pretty much steer direct to Martins Bay now and we'll keep climbing for a little while. We're still do with a bit of extra height. Um, at the moment we've been experimenting with the heading bug, that's that's a heading hold lateral function on the autopilot. Um, we could choose a different one, if I wanted to use nav, what I can do is go into the, um, go into the GPS and look for the nearest or a nearby VOR, there's a one on 113.6, so if I go into um, the COM radio, sorry the NAV radio and dial in 113.6, if we dial in we should see the HSI come alive, which you just did. So what I'll do is, I'll centre that up, so we're going to fly, we'll set up a course to it, oops I've overshot there. So we, that's roughly we'd need to be steering east to get there and we're heading pretty much north at the moment. So again watching the flight director, ignore what it's doing for now. If I press the nav button, we've got nav mode selected up here and the flight director is immediately putting the lateral bar way out to the right. So that's telling us we need to bank the aircraft to the right. And the distance it's deviated from the centre is proportional to how much of a bank we need. So if I put it into a, a shallow bank and hold it there, you can see the bar's moved in a little way, but not all the way. So it's really, what it's doing is it's recommending a specific degree of bank. If I achieve that and hold it, which I'm not very good at, you see that flight director bar is pretty much centered now. It's actually overshot the center because we banked too much. And that's like a 20 degree bank. Uh, and now it's, it's shot out the other way because I've achieved the target heading and I should have leveled out. I wasn't paying enough attention there. So that's what the flight director does when the a lateral mode selected, the autopilot itself, uh, master switch is disengaged, but we're getting that information on the ADR. I hope we've illustrated that adequately. And of course the same holds for if I was using the vertical modes, so altitude hold or airspeed hold. I'm about to fly through a cloud, which is not very helpful. So Martin's Bay is down there somewhere. We're going to go all the way down. We're going to land on the beach, why not? Oh, <laughs> 
Boom. There we go.